Hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about the very basics of VHDL. You know, VHDL stands for Virtual Hybrid Design Language. So every line that you write here is does actually mean something in the hardware. For example, when you write entity and define a module, what you are essentially doing is defining a type of chip. Just very similar to the ones that you use in the lab. And it, when you define a chip, you also define input and output pins of that chip, right? Here, what you are doing is for inside the port, you put the inputs in and in and outputs for that chip. Also, you can define uh, them as a vector. So th this becomes a bus. This whole thing becomes TN from 3 to 0 or this whole thing becomes LEDs. From 1 to 0. Now that you define the chip itself, this is all the chip uh, can do with the outside world. So anything that you connect from outside will have no knowledge of what is inside. Whatever you write in the architecture won't be accessible to the outside uh, world. When you're using this module, you will be only interested in these ports, in the names of the ports and uh, the types of each of the variables and that's it then we can move on to the architecture and in for the architecture what you are doing is defining what is inside the chip so what you can do is uh, get the inputs and outputs and carry them to some signals like here and these should be defined before beginning your actual architecture because these are the things that will, you will be using inside your architecture. Without defining them, you won't have any access to them. And for example, if you have any other architecture inside this module, to be able to access them, you uh, have to define signals for each and every of them. You won't be able to reach this input signal from another architecture. And as you can see, I defined the uh, signals input same as my buttons and then put the buttons to inputs to my signal. The reason I do that is because I won't be able to change anything from this uh, buttons input because that's an input. What you are essentially doing here is connecting some output stimuli to this chip. You won't be able to connect uh, anything outside from within the chip. So what we are doing is putting these buttons to inputs to a signal that we can control. And signals are bidirectional, so you can write on them and also read from them. That's okay. For uh, inputs or outputs, that's not okay. From inputs, you can only read like this. And for outputs, you can only uh, change the output itself like this. So you won't be able to put these LEDs on the right side of this connection. Speaking of which, this is a wire connection. So... Uh, when you put some operation like that, you're connecting this, whatever is on the right side, to the left side, just with a wire. So we have inputs here, okay? And what you are doing is connecting this to the inputs. You can think of it as a box, or better yet, you can think of it as only the inside of it. So you are not directly connecting the, the pins on the outside to anything inside but first carry them to some other wire inputs this is also from 3 to 0 okay and similarly we have some wires defined as outputs there's two things 1 to 0 and these are directly connected to the output now that we have uh, the same thing okay this is the same thing we have something called a bus buttons and inside it's called inputs there is also another bus called leds and inside it's called outputs now what we can do is use these inputs do some arithmetic stuff or anything 
inside the chip and then send the result to output and that output will be showing up on the LEDs for example we can take input 3 and input 0 and put them through a logic gate and the output will be output which one? 1 okay this is what we are doing here exactly we are taking the signals input doing an operation on them and connecting the wire of that operation to output signal wire we can also further continue our operations on the output too. for example we can do some operational output one and connect the result of that operation to output zero that's okay because this is a signal you cannot do the same thing with the uh, buttons or leds uh, now that we have some understanding of what the top module or the uh, main modules that we are doing now we have to test them in real world when you have something like a chip let's say an end gate something like this right what you do is you put some inputs here from outside for example connect to a battery to them this plus five this zero and you check with some probes what here what you get here this is wrong okay either plus five or zero in VHDL you can do the same thing but uh, again virtually what you can do is you have a chip like this it has some pins input pins and output pins and all you know is that input pins the names of that and the output pins then you can put this chip inside a bigger bigger board or bigger chip however you call it and simulate some inputs to that from inside not from outside from inside with some stimuli and say that what these do and then you can check again from inside results results of the outputs how do you do that for that we use test bench uh, here is a sample test bench for this top module we were seeing and this brings us to the other topic this defining components you can define any component inside any module and what they do is uh, adding more things to be used in the architecture just like signals you can see the signals here and there was no components here but you can also add some other components so you can have a chip and inside that chip you can have other chips like that and there will be some very complicated connections here maybe so you can design some uh, bigger modules like this like this and what we are doing here in the test bench is exactly the same we are taking our module to be tested and put inside another bigger module here component and define the ports that component has exactly uh, same same as how we defined before you can actually just copy this part and paste it here too that's okay and then some signals that you want to test also uh, might this entity part here is empty because there is nothing f uh, going going in from outside or going outside from this test bench you can uh, and actually you should leave this empty so that this works as a test bench without any external uh, without needing anything ex external okay this uh, clock part you can ignore for now and then we define some signals ex 
whatever we put here we define signals exactly this many of things and then after beginning to the architecture remember we just defined this component inside we are not able to use that right now we first need to instantiate that and inside uh, inside the architecture after beginning you instantiate the top module and you put a port map and you can also uh, give it a name for for this one uut and in the port map you take all of the pins of that module and assign them to some signals these signals are arbitrary signals that we defined here so that now we can change these signals from inside the module without needing anything from outside and then see the result on this signal you can see if we first wait for 50 nanoseconds then change the signal there which in turn is connected to the buttons and then we can see the result then we can wait for another 50 nanoseconds of course you won't be able to use this wait for command inside the top module because the top module doesn't know anything about the timing you can think of it like this you have a chip it has an AND gate and it has an input A and B and an output X there is nothing time related here it, it doesn't keep the time it doesn't t track uh, the times and it doesn't have a clock basically so uh, you cannot expect to have anything time related inside a chip so you cannot put something like wait for some nanoseconds inside this module the only where you can the only place you can do that is in the test bench because test bench can take the time from your computer when it's, re when it's working from inside your computer uh, anyway so we can uh, put as many cases we want like this and then test if our module is working so the first step to test it if your module is working is running the synthesis when you run the synthesis what you are doing is translating these uh, words into a, a language that the machine can understand the machine doesn't understand this end and it should convert it to some hardware related stuff first you can see it's running the synthesis right now what we are doing is just creating this chip with inputs and outputs if you want to continue to implement your design to the board you can run the implementation but for now we will just say v reports and stay there after that if you don't have any syntax errors you will succeed this and it will say synthesis complete after that you can go to the top module and a test bench and test if your design is working and a good way to understand which component you are testing is just pressing here if your top module is inside the test bench then it should be okay then it all comes down to writing these parts now we can run the simulation And in this part what we are doing is we have the chip and now we are putting the chip inside the test bench to be tested uh, we can make this bigger and see how it went let's focus the uh, zoom on the beginning of it now you see we changed the buttons by ourselves there is nothing external it's done within the code uh, here if I can do it yep here the buttons first we say it's 4 then 6 then 5 then C this is all hexadecimal of course but you can also change the format of display to binary to be able to see exactly 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 and you can see in the test bench we also first put 0, 1, 0, 0, then 0, 1, 1, 0. and you can also see the result of it again this is in this was in hexadecimal this is still in hexadecimal 
we can make it show it as binary and see the result for each of our operations. For XOR gate, we were using the most significant and least significant bit. So the result of that was at the first uh, most significant bit of let's so you see it's zero, it's still zero, but whenever one of them turns to one, then it becomes one. Again, one of them is one, the most significant piece is one, the other one is zero, it's, it's still one. Further, what you can do is, you can force some values to those. For example, in button signal, you can force a constant and say, for example, one, 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 and make this binary again, not hexadecimal. Then you can run the simulation a little bit more. Now, as you can see, the button signal is now 1111 as we first. You can do the same thing to the clock too. Clock was running for some time at the beginning, but then it stopped. So you can right click that uh, clock you want to force, force clock. You can put 1 and 0 or vice versa, it doesn't matter, and define a period, for example, 300 nanoseconds. Then if you continue to run this, you will be able to see a 300 nanosecond period within this clock. This is another way to test your inputs and outputs in test bench. So uh, that's it for today. See you in the next video.